Hey everybody, Some Gadget Guy here, taking a crack at Sennheiser's Geformi Zero gaming headset. Just kidding, they're the Game Zeros, and let's get rid of this box, because we gotta talk about these cans. Just a reminder that on all of my headset reviews, all of the VO I'm recording is actually coming from the mic on the headset being reviewed. Walking around the hardware on the Zero, Sennheiser has again delivered fantastic build quality. It's a lightweight but sturdy plastic which feels very durable, large circumaural ear cups with healthy amounts of foam lovingly hug the sides of your head. And the headband is springy without feeling like they're clamping your head in a vise. We've got a terrific top pad to make sure the weight of the cans isn't headache inducing. The design is collapsible with metal ball and socket joints providing a satisfying click when the units push in. I love Sennheiser's attention to small details. The mic is a pretty big clue which ear cup contains left channel, but the headband still includes their three dot tactile marker also found on their more traditional headphones. The closed back design does a very good job of attenuating noise, though I find in general over-ear cans don't cut as much noise as on-ear cans, though over-ear headphones tend to be more comfortable when worn for longer sessions. The cable is protected by a stiff rubber boot, which should take some punishment, and the nylon weave protecting the cable is a standard but welcome offering for this class of headset. I have no doubts it'll prove durable. Game Zero has separate jacks for headphones and microphone. More traditional gaming setups will probably play nice, especially for folks who use dedicated sound cards, but gamers on newer systems that rely on a single 3.5mm jack will need to invest in an adapter to combine the headphone and mic signals into one jack. There are some handy controls built into the hardware. The right ear cup has a volume dial to make quick adjustments while in the middle of gameplay. Very smooth scrolling action, and the dial cuts a bit more than half the audio being fed from your source. The dial will not completely mute playback. The left ear cup houses the microphone on a swivel arm. Swivel the microphone vertically, and that will mute your audio. It's a handy ergonomic touch, as moving the mic away from your face while gaming means you probably don't want other players to hear what you're saying, so why not just mute the whole channel? This mic is one of the better headset mics I've encountered. Just look at the diaphragm size between the Zero and a headset like the HyperX Cloud 2. It provides a detailed, crisp sound for speech, and it's an edgy and aggressive tone. Senny's noise reduction does provide a noticeable benefit, but don't expect it to completely strip background noise in loud environments. And I find there's just a bit more air in these recordings. It's not hiss, and it's not room tone, but while it's more present, I doubt it'll distract much from gaming, especially when compared to systems lacking noise reduction. If I have a complaint, I wish the boom arm for the mic had a bit more flexibility. It's uncharacteristic of Sennheiser to ship this with such a vague feel, and I would have preferred the placement options provided from more of a gooseneck style boom, especially being able to twist more. It made finding a good angle more difficult, and I wasn't able to completely eliminate P-pops, nose breathing, and other plosives from this recording test. That small criticism aside, I suppose we should probably talk about audio playback quality. I am hugely biased towards an even and neutral EQ, and Game Zero does not disappoint. It's a balanced and nuanced sound, showing a healthy amount of respect to gamers that they won't just want a pair of bassy skull rumblers. I was surprised to hear, though, that this headset was noticeably quieter than other headphones I've reviewed in the past. Getting the Zero up to a comfortable listening volume, then switching to my HD25s or Cloud 2 was actually pretty painful. Means you'll be driving your amp about 10 to 15% harder using this headset. Listening to some music, I was also surprised to hear them get overloaded and distort on OK Go's white knuckles. OK Go is becoming a standard test for headphones, as I think the band made this whole album way louder than they really needed to. Game Zero couldn't quite hold on, overloading pretty bad, where again a pair of studio monitors are able to just barely wrap their drivers around such a loud track. I never thought I'd ever say this, but moving to a more reasonably mixed track, like Bangarang from Skrillex, <laughs> really woke these puppies up. Excellent clarity and instrument separation, present bass, crisp, raspy mids, good air on the high end, exactly what I want to hear from a product which might pull double duty as a gaming accessory and general audio playback solution. Where I was most impressed was in playing back some jazz. Perez Prado's Cherry Pink was delightfully reproduced. Fun, honking instruments capturing vibrato and buzz, sitting on a bed of upright bass, dancing around the inside of my skull. Of course, this is a gaming headset, so how well do they handle that? In two words, very well. They are only stereo, no fancy surround sound, so the audio profile can feel a little flatter than some of the other higher-end solutions on the market, but it's a very high-quality stereo with great noise reduction and plays well with complex sound design elements. Firing up real-time strategy didn't seem to affect gameplay much at all, but Alien Isolation benefits from freaking you out by bouncing sounds around you, and first-person gaming in general will likely feel a little bit duller on these cans. So where does that leave us with the Sennheiser Game Zero? I'm a little torn.
At a street price just under $200, you'll be getting an expertly built headset with a class-leading microphone and which is really comfortable to wear for long periods of time. While I love the more neutral frequency response and it is a high-quality playback, the volume deficit and ability to overload these cans over similarly priced competing solutions might be a point of concern for people who like to listen loud. Obligatory warning here about protecting your ears and not damaging your hearing. My time with the Game Zero, I happily reached for them over my Cloud 2 every Every single time. This is a better headset. But I don't know that Sennheiser has completely made up the $100 price disparity between the two. As always, that is it worth it for the monies question can only be answered by the individual shopping them and what features they think are most important. I'll of course leave some links down below this video for more info on the Sennheiser Game Zero and where you can shop these puppies online. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more reviews like these and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't sharing my videos on social sites like Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and the Reddit. So keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button and I will catch you all on the next review.